What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mode. Let's finish off this cultist. So we're going to start with Drew Kai Violet here. And we are going to paint it on. And I'm kind of using it to show a little bit of bruising on the cultist and to get into the shadows. So we're going right here under his chest in uh, between all the folds of the muscles. It's a nice deep purplish red color that will go very nicely into all of the little all of the little crevasses. <clears throat> so yeah we're doing we're just doing shades and washes and blood effects today. Pretty much finished everything else so here we're painting it into his ab muscles. And I'm gonna paint all around the Chaos Star. These models are so, they look so good. If you haven't seen my unboxing video where I unbox the cultists, I really talk about how far they've come in a manner of speaking for the sculpting of these models. Like when the Dark Vengeance kit came out, us old timers were like, whoa! So we're going into the back. Again, like I said, getting it all into the different sh shaded areas. If this were a nice, law-abiding, healthy Imperial citizen, he wouldn't have any Drukai Violet, but he's, he's got some problems. He's got those pimples in his back, he's got uh, drug tubes feeding into him, so we're, we're giving him a little bit of a sickly, bruised pallor to his skin. Here we're going under, his, under the back of his hairline, over the ears under his eyeballs, the brow ridge. Yeah, it really, it really adds uh, what I think is a nice pop of color, that purple. Because you've got, you've got the Raiklin Flesh Shade, which is a very nice, healthy looking skin tone. Oh, right there, that's where you get it. You can really see the positive effect it has when you paint it onto that drug tube. But yeah, like I said, you've got the Raiklin Flesh Tone, and um, this really just gives it another level for you evil characters out there who want to do, or for those who want to do evil characters and paint them up and give them a very savage look. This purple wash is really, really nice. There's the inside of the Chaos Star there. You don't want too much. You don't want it to spread out and go everywhere. Um, but I am using it straight from the bottle. For most of the shades, I use I use them straight out of the bottle. And you just kind of watch how the, it controls on your brush. It's the uh, thickness of some of the, the layer paints that I have a problem with. Which is why I always thin them down. But shades, they, they work pretty well as long as you shake up the pot. You can see how you add a little bit more to those shaded recessed areas and it really gives a nice, nice look. Very cool. I'm gonna add a little bit more here now to his uh, knuckles and forearm. I think I add a little bit too much. You don't want to ever see straight purple. Like you can see on his knuckles there. You just want it to be a, a hint of that dark reddish purple bruising. So a little bit too much on his knuckles there, but that's all right. What a beautiful model. I, I'm, I think I might have mentioned this in one of my other videos, but I really like giving them drab kind of clothes so you can pop the, the colors out when you choose to use them. Like I'm gonna be doing some Slanesh and Zinch models soon, and I'm planning on going pretty crazy with their with their clothes colors, but I know Nurgle, Corn, they're, they're not really into all that. So these uh, brown, almost khaki pants, like, like he's a, former Imperial Guardsmen seem to work just fine. <clears throat> oh man, look at all the detail on his back with those boils and stuff. Gross! 
yeah, so I'm just kind of looking at it now, deciding whether or not I should go on, and I think I called it a night for this one. Picking back up here, I'm using the old bolt gun metal. Couldn't find my lead belcher, but that's what you would use. Either lead belcher or iron breaker, since those are the darker silver metallics. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the buttons on this guy's um, boot covers. So here, are, here I go, taking some paint out, putting it on the wet palette next to my lamp, and then going for those little buttons. And I'm sorry, I have them out of shot. I'm still getting used to this camera angle. But um, he, he, I think he's got three or four buttons on, the side, on each side of his leg warmers, <laughs> boot covers. So I'm going to show them to you in just a second once I realize. Don't! Also, I'm painting up his auto pistol here, highlighting that up. And then this is where I realize, oh shoot, I was none of that was in frame. So I'm just kind of show with my brush right there are, are the three buttons on that side. Here are the three buttons on that side. Yeah, sorry about that. As the video goes on, I seem to have a really terrible time keeping my model in frame. So now I've decided to go with the drugs. Go with the drugs! And I put the Dark Angel Green as a base coat onto all of the little tubes. So here's the one popping out of his head. And all of the ones injected into his back. Sorry, it's a little blurry. I know. Currently taking donations to the War Boss Tay Buy Me a New Camera Fund. <laughs> I'm not really, although I should. Um, that awesome camera that I got from Punk Rock Painting, uh, it has a little bit of an auto zoom to it, and I've got it back in my other place. There's times like this when I'm I shake my fist. Wish I had it. So I guess while while this blurry nonsense is going on, I'll, I'll let you know when it comes back to clarity. I just want to say thank you to all you guys who play my videos while you're working and painting and doing your own hobby stuff. I know definitely that is how I got started on YouTube. I would look for videos related to armies that I like, but pretty soon I was just playing you know, Blue Table Painting's Bat Reps, uh, Mini War Gaming's Bat Reps, and uh, Joe's Eldar Tactica videos, and uh, some of that was just so Eldar Tactica X, and I, I remember I didn't even play Eldar, but I would just play it in the background because it, it helped get me through those drudgery, uh, the drudgery of those long painting sections. Uh, sessions, I mean, rather. Moot green! We're adding a little bit of a highlight color now. So, because these files are all different angles, they're at different angles, you're gonna need to just be a little bit careful about how you go about uh, lining the top of them. And again, I apologize, you can't really see because of the, the angle and the zoom, but um, I'm just kind of painting over the Dark Angel screen uh, closest to the top. So what you should see is the blue or the gray of the glass and then this line of bright green, moot green color and then at the bottom, Dark Angel's green. It's the moot green that really catches the eye but the Dark Angel's green is what gives it the depth for when somebody picks up your model and is like, oh my gosh, this looks, looks amazing. You can say, War Boss Tay taught me how to paint it. Yeah, so thanks for watching my videos. If you have been a subscriber of mine for any amount of time, you've probably seen my War Boss Tay July Painting Challenge videos. And this video is, or this series, is a shout out to my good buddy, Mick, the old git. So head over to Mick's page, subscribe to him if you haven't already, and yeah, he's a great guy. There you see my X27, Tamiya Clear Red, for all your bloody needs. I'm going to be mixing up some blood now to add my final gore effects. So I use Tamiya 
Abaddon Black, a Tamiya Clear Red, Citadel's Abaddon Black, and Dried Bark. And here's a little bit of uh, close-up on my painting palette, my wet palette. So what you want to do is you want to mix a little bit of all three colors and I think at this point I hadn't really shaken my Tamiya Clear Red so it's it looks pretty watery it's not as thick as as it could be but that's all right so you want to make sure you shake your your paint pots uh, paint pots get them uh, get the pigment if it's separated, like if it was sitting on your table, like mine was for a while too, uh, mix up again. And you can see I add my brown and my black, and I kind of keep them separate a little bit, but then I try as much as possible to uh, get them to mix a little bit. And again, I'm sorry, it's at the bottom of the screen because I think I was more focused on looking at it and trying to figure out why uh, the red just looks so thin. So I shook it up a little bit, I added more here. Uh, but you can't you can't really see it, unfortunately. Igor, why don't you center the camera when you're working? I'm oh, sorry, Master. I don't like to look at blood. It scares me. It grosses me out. It's why I never became a brain surgeon. That and because I like to eat brains. Alright, so now I've got my, my mixture here. We're gonna go back on the model. And I think from here on, I, here on out, hopefully I've got it a little bit in better focus. So we're gonna start by slathering it on his knife as, it's, as if it's been freshly used. It's still a little watery though, so I decide to add a little bit more pigment with the black have it on black paint. The goal is you want it to be splotchy, you want it to have different consistencies. Um, I realized halfway through painting this that Girl Painting did an awesome tutor tutorial, Girl Painting tutorial, on using blood effects with Tamiya Clear Red and adding some white glue, some PVA glue, and uh, I just realized it after doing this video, but that would definitely help to, to give it some thickness. Right now it looks like very fresh blood and as a corn cultist that that's probably good but I kind of wanted to make this guy look like he's been running around chopping people up all night and uh, so his his knife is just covered in dried gore and uh, fleshy bits so right now it still looks pretty pretty new so what I decide to do is kind of spread the paint out so that there's a little bit of a variety. It doesn't look like it was just left in a pot of red paint and then taken out. I kind of want to show a little bit of a difference so I, you can kind of see me smudge away the thickest areas and I'm trying to blend it into the silver so you can see some streaks, you can see a little bit of splotchiness, um, but it's got a variety of different, different looks to it. I'm adding a little bit of, of black I believe. I added just a touch more of Abaddon Black and, and I got some on his pants and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go with it. Splotchy, splotchy, splotchy. Improvisation. On the spot. Yeah, so Old Git, fantastic guy. I've known him for, I'll say, almost a year now. He's been subscribe to my channel. I know that because I first started uh, corresponding with him through the um, Beastman videos that I was doing a little while ago, a year ago. He'd asked me about painting some Beastman figures. I just ordered a bunch of them off of eBay. I got a, a whole load of them for really cheap cent centigores, the metal ones, um, a bunch of the newer gore and ungore kits. And he'd been painting Beastmen up at the time, really, really nice. They 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 looked like um, they had worshipped Zinch because the Gores and the Ungores they had um, these really nicely nicely colored like his color composition for the tabards really cool. So check him out. I'll put a little linky that you can you can check him out in. Uh, but yeah, 
planning on doing all these shout out vids for all of my buddies who did the July painting challenge. So if you uh, have been under a rock or you've just subscribed to me, you'll see a lot more videos promoting their channels coming up. So here I am just adding more blood. Now is the fun part, we get to the body. So I start by lining a little bit of dried blood around this kind of uh, injection tube first. And then I decide, oh, wouldn't it look cool like if the dry, if the blood was spilling onto his leg? So I'm just doing little bits of dots and very light brush strokes. Not doing any lines, just dabbing little dots onto his pant leg. Then I'm lining all of the little implants on his body as if the blood is still slightly fresh and leaking out slowly of his body, but really almost dr com dried completely. Here on the back, you've got all of these test tubes, or tubes of drugs, rather. So I'm taking a little bit of the, the darker mixture with the black and the brown in it. It's nice and thick at this point because it's starting to dry, and we're just slowly dabbing it from around the, the meeting of the test tube to the skin, and then drawing it down the figure. Disgusting master. Well, don't watch then, Igor. No, I don't. Or do you think it's out of focus and off center? Uh. Yeah, I think at this point I had put down the camera and went into the kitchen to make myself a sandwich. And something to do with cats, like a cat sandwich. No, peanut butter and jelly. Cat flavored jelly? No. Guava. Hmm. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Igor is my little Crip Ghoul assistant. He operates the camera. And um, yeah, he likes to eat cats. So I'm surprised. Good on you. A guava jelly sandwich with absolutely no cats inside it. Yeah, but the bread was made out of cats, too. I used my new bread maker. I put a little tabby in. One of those black tuxedo cats that wander around the neighborhood. So he had a guava jelly sandwich on cat bread. Uh, yeah, so I think... <laughs> Sorry ladies and gentlemen, I was really into the blood effects at this point, which is why you don't see anything. Igor just couldn't take it. He had to aim the camera away. But I'm going to show you in just a second, hopefully, what it looks like. There you go. Put the blood all around the star and all the different areas. So, hope you guys liked it. Thanks for watching.